Under the leadership of Chancellor Otto von Bismarck and the Prussian kings, a united Germany arose in 1871 like a phoenix from a patchwork of smaller German states. This historic unification was fueled by a policy of blood and iron, a fierce and unyielding approach that resulted in a seismic shift in Europe's political and cultural landscape. The year 1871 became a watershed moment in European history, completely upending the balance of power in the continent and setting the stage for the conflicts of the 20th century. In the mid-19th century, Europe was in a state of flux and chaos. The Napoleonic Wars had finally come to a close, but the scars of the battles ran deep, leaving widespread destruction and misery throughout the continent. In addition, the French Revolution had shaken things up and brought forth fresh, innovative ideas that challenged the status quo. Nationalism was one of these revolutionary notions that emerged in response to the aftermath of the Napoleonic Wars. Nationalists promoted the concept of the nation-state, founded on a shared culture and language. They advocated for self-determination and placed great emphasis on the distinct identity of each nation. In addition to nationalism, liberalism also emerged in the wake of the French Revolution. Liberals championed the rights and freedoms of the individual, calling for minimal government interference in the economy. On the other hand, conservatism preached traditional values and order, rejecting the newfangled ideas of liberalism. Following the defeat of Napoleon, the European powers convened in the Congress of Vienna in 1815, aiming to reshape the map of Europe and establish a new balance of power. While the Congress was successful in restoring the old order, it also paved the way for future conflicts. Amidst the aftermath of Napoleon, the Congress of Vienna gave birth to the German Confederation a surrogate for the once mighty Holy Roman Empire. Under Austria, the Confederation was the mediator in trade and foreign affairs, harmonizing the interests of 39 loosely connected German states. Yet the Confederation was riddled with problems. The tempestuous winds of nationalism threatened to destroy it. The fervent desire for a united and independent Germany burned bright in the hearts of many. Liberalism, with its calls for free speech and uncensored press, further fanned the flames of opposition against the conservative and autocratic governments that constituted the Confederation's core. At the same time, the Kingdom of Prussia became a powerful force in Germany under King Frederick William III. He implemented significant reforms, like getting rid of serfdom and creating a modern legal system. During the Congress of Vienna, Prussia was granted a land in the Rhineland and Westphalia, which made it even more dominant. The Zollverein, a customs union that brought many of the German states under Prussian control helped encourage economic cooperation among them. This further strengthened Prussia's influence in Germany. Tensions kept brewing between Prussia and Austria as they had different ideas about Germany's future. Prussia wanted a unified and federalized Germany with itself as the leader, while Austria wanted to hold on to its own power in the region and keep Germany divided. The year 1848 witnessed widespread uprisings across Europe, including Germany, as people clamored for greater political freedom and economic opportunities. Demanding a new constitution and more political representation, German protesters rallied against the status quo. The Frankfurt Parliament was then established as a result to create a new constitution for a united Germany. Unfortunately, the parliament failed, seeing conservative forces squash its efforts. Over the next few years, tensions between Prussia and Austria continued to escalate, with both trying to gain more influence in the region. As part of the Congress of Vienna, the Schleswig-Holstein question emerged in the mid-19th century due to competing nationalistic movements in Germany and Denmark. The duchies of Schleswig and Holstein, two ethnically German states, were initially ruled by the Danish monarchy, but held their own independence. In 1863, Denmark announced a new constitution that would incorporate Schleswig into Denmark, inflaming German nationalist sentiment. In response, 
Prussia and Austria jointly declared war on Denmark in 1864, marking the beginning of the Second Schleswig War. The war was a decisive German victory, with Denmark ceding control of Schleswig-Holstein to Prussia and Austria. Following this, Prussia felt like Austria was attempting to limit their influence in Schleswig-Holstein. Faced with the inevitability of war, Otto von Bismarck, the minister-president of Prussia, knew that preparation was key and that alliances needed to be formed. Bismarck's first move was to ally with Italy, a nation with its sights similarly set on expelling Austrian influence from the Italian peninsula. By joining forces with Prussia, Italy would force Austria to fight a war on two fronts, giving the odds a significant boost in Prussia's favor. On June 14, 1866, the Austro-Prussian War commenced as Prussian troops crossed into Saxony, a known Austrian ally. General von Moltke led the Prussian army to an impressive victory over the Austrian forces in a series of intense battles, including the pivotal Battle of Koniggratz, which took place on July 3rd. The war's outcome was the Treaty of Prague, signed on August 23, 1866, as a result of a superior combination of Prussian technology and tactics. Prussia incorporated states like Schleswig and Hanover into their own, while Italy was granted Venezia. Austria was forced to withdraw from the German Confederation, effectively dismantling it. The dissolution of the German Confederation and their victory over the Austrians gave the Prussians hegemony over Germany. This was further cemented with the creation of their own confederation in 1867, the North German Confederation. This new confederation was a federal state consisting of 22 members across northern Germany led by Prussia, with a parliament consisting of two chambers, the Bundesrat, which represented the states, and the Reichstag, which represented the people. The structure of the North German Confederation was designed to obviously give Prussia a significant degree of control. In 1868, the Spanish monarchy was overthrown by a revolution that toppled Queen Isabella II. In the aftermath of this upheaval, the Spanish throne was offered to Prince Leopold of Hohenzollern Sigmaringen, a member of the Prussian royal house. However, this bold move drew the ire of the French emperor Napoleon III, who feared that the ascent of a Hohenzollern to the Spanish throne would upset the delicate balance of power in Europe and strengthen Prussia's position. Determined to prevent this perceived threat, Napoleon III demanded that Prince Leopold's candidacy be withdrawn, but his demand fell on deaf ears, as the Prussian king adamantly refused to budge. The fuse that ignited this explosive situation was the Ems Dispatch, a secret conversation between Count Benedetti, the French ambassador to Prussia, and King Wilhelm I of Prussia, which took place in the tranquil resort town of Ems in July 1870. Here, Benedetti implored the king to guarantee that Prince Leopold's candidacy would not be renewed, but the king stood firm and refused to make any concessions. In the weeks that followed, the diplomatic crisis deepened as both sides rallied their forces and mobilized public opinion. Otto von Bismarck skillfully used the Emma's dispatch to sway German opinion and portray France as the aggressor and to galvanize German national sentiment. This led to the typically pro-French German states of Baden, Württemberg, and Bavaria siding with the Prussians, viewing the French as the aggressors. The outbreak of war in August 1870 caught France off guard, as the Prussian army quickly seized the initiative and scored a series of stunning victories, culminating in the fateful Battle of Sedan in September, which saw the capture of Napoleon III and the collapse of the Second Empire. With the fall of the Second Empire, France was left in political turmoil. A provisional government was established, deposing Napoleon and declaring the Third Republic. It struggled to hold on to power as the Prussian army marched towards Paris. Their position was further hampered by revolutionaries and radicals swarming the streets of Paris, who announced the creation of their own commune. The siege of the French capital began on September 19, 1870. For four long months, Paris endured the agony of starvation, disease, and bombardment as the Prussian army encircled the city and cut off all supply lines. Finally, on January 28, 1871, the French government accepted an armistice.
As the dust settled from the Franco-Prussian War, Otto von Bismarck's grand plan for a unified Germany was finally realized. The French had been soundly defeated, the Austrians brought to heel, and Germany was now under Bismarck's hegemony. In a dazzling display of pomp and circumstance, King Wilhelm was crowned German Emperor in the Hall of Mirrors at the Palace of Versailles on January 18, 1871. The centuries of fragmentation were finally over, and Germany emerged as a unified nation-state, with Prussia at the helm. The armistice of January 28th paved the way for the Treaty of Frankfurt on May 10th, marking the end of the Franco-Prussian War. The terms were harsh for France, who was forced to cede the provinces of Alsace and Lorraine to Germany, pay a massive indemnity of 5 billion francs to the new German Empire, and accept and fund the German occupation of northern France until the indemnity was paid. Another consequence of French defeat was that with the French monarchy no longer in power once again, the papal states surrounding Rome was vulnerable. This led to the Kingdom of Italy finally completing its own arduous unification process the year prior in 1870. The impact of German unification on Europe was profound. The emergence of a powerful and centralized Germany might as well had thrown the concept of balance of power out the window. Germany became the dominant force in mainland Europe, with its rapid industrialization and economic growth propelling it onto the world stage. Its military might, combined with its strategic location in the heart of Europe, made it a potential threat to its neighbors. A realignment of alliances to accommodate and counter Germany's unification had far-reaching consequences, playing a large factor leading up to the outbreak of World War I. The complex web of alliances that had developed in Europe by 1910 meant that a conflict between any two powers could quickly escalate into a larger war, and the tensions between Germany and its neighbors eventually boiled over into a global conflict that would claim the lives of millions. Blood and iron, two simple words that perfectly denote Bismarck's ruthless policy of the same name. Through the Iron Chancellor's shrewd, skillful navigation of politics and diplomacy, blood and his masterful use of the experienced Prussian war machine when needed, iron. Bismarck had transformed the Kingdom of Prussia and a sea of some other 37 German states into a single unified Germany. However, the young empire would see its downfall in the next 50 years in the crater holes and mud seas of France and Flanders, the result of a cataclysmic, apocalyptic war dictated by ancient aristocracies and pioneered by new machines of death and destruction. <laughs>